Hey, this video is going to show you how to do a hypothesis test for a mean when all you have is the sample statistics, so no sample data to work with. Okay, so I start out with a claim here. The average time for the population is less than 16.43. Okay, so I see that word average. I know I'm talking about a mean, so I'm going to come over here and grab that mean symbol mu. And I'll make this one equal 16.43. Next one's also going to be the same. And they want less than, so less than 16.43. And that alternative hypothesis is my claim. So I'll just make a note for myself there for later. Looking at that alternative hypothesis, I've got mu is less than, so that is going to be a left-tailed test. Now you can see below, we're going to calculate left, right, and two-tailed, so you can do this for any type. And because this is a mean and all I have is a sample standard deviation, uh, this is going to require me to use a t-distribution. So I'm also given the sample mean, sample standard deviation, and a sample size. Um, I'm going to need a few more things in order to uh, get this figured out. Um, the degrees of freedom, which is always one less than n, which you could just type in 14, or you can calculate it. Um, so if you change to a different problem, you just change the n and it changes everything. So there's my degrees of freedom. I need the sampling distribution, which here's the formula to remind me how I calculate that. So I'll have Excel do the heavy lifting for me. So S divided by the square root of N. And there's the standard deviation for the sampling distribution. And I need that because it's going to go into this formula for my test statistic T. And that's the next thing I need. Once I get that, I'll be able to calculate my p-values. Okay, so using this formula, I've got x bar minus, and oh, I already forgot, I need some parentheses around that, so it subtracts those values before dividing by the standard deviation. And mu, well, it's up there, and divided by the standard deviation I just calculated. And there is the test statistic t for this hypothesis test. Now, if I come down here, I'm ready to start doing my left, right, and two-tailed. If I'm using a t distribution, so I'm going to start with t, and I can see it there, t dot disk, that returns the left-tailed for the t distribution, so that's the one I want here. Now, it tells me it needs x. What it actually wants is the test statistic that I just calculated. So I'm going to choose that, and degrees of freedom we've got up there. And then we always want cumulative because we want the area for everything to the left. And there is my p-value for a left-tailed test. For a right-tailed test, I look at that list. There was a t.dis.rt. Well, that means right tail. So I can do the same thing with this one. And degrees of freedom. And there is the p-value for a right tail test. And then the last one, that 2t, well, that's two-tailed. So I can pick that one as well. Choose my test statistic and the degrees of freedom. And now I have, oh, uh-oh, I typed something wrong. Hmm. All right, that's not working, so let me try something else. Um, the other option is to take two times the min of these two, whichever the smaller one of the two is, is going to be one of the two tails I need. So if I just double it, that will also give me the two tail value. So there it is. Okay, so I am doing a left tail though, so I want to take that first one and compare it to my alpha of 0.05, and this is definitely less than alpha. And so when p is less than alpha, that means that I reject the null hypothesis. And it, since my claim was the alternative hypothesis and I'm rejecting the nulls, and that means there is enough evidence to support the claim. Okay. 
that the average time for the population is less than 16.43. And that's it.